What's up, students? So today in class, we worked through a problem with a circuit that kind of looked like this. And there was a lot of people that seemed like they were a, a little uneasy on how I broke this down to a simple circuit and how this allowed me to not only know the resistors, this was everything that's given. But what I'm going to show you how to do right now is find the V, the I, and the R at every single resistor and also the battery in the circuit and how I did it. Because I feel like in class I might have went through it a little bit too fast and I want to make sure that everybody's confident. To find V equals IR, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what is a combined circuit here. And by a combined circuit I mean that I have some series things going on, I have some parallel relationships going on, and what I want to do is get to an end goal where I just have one battery and one resistor. Okay, and then I'm going to work backwards, expanding things. I'm going to crunch all of these together to make one resistor. The first thing that I'm going to do to break this circuit down is I'm going to look at these two resistors right here. Why? Because these are really, really simple. And this is very easy for me to do. These two resistors, regardless of what's going on over here, these two resistors are in series. So we remember that resistors in series are just the sum, R1 plus R2. So if I was to take these two and simplify them into one equivalent resistance, I would say that that is going to be 120 ohms. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewrite the entire circuit with that simplified REQ in it. Okay, so through amazing editing skills, this is now drawn. And one thing I did is I like to put a little star. That reminds me when I'm coming back that this is a combination of more than one resistors than they were before. So now I'm going to look for another combination of circuits that I can turn into one equivalent resistance. And that relationship that I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at these two right here. These two circuits are in parallel. And we know that resistors in parallel are 1 over REQ equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. This is on your uh, reference table, guys. So now I'm going to have 1 over 40 ohms plus 1 over 120 ohms is going to be equal to 3 over 120 plus 1 over 120. So now we're going to have a relationship where we have 4 over 120, but that's 1 over our EQ. So we have to do 120 over 4. And then we see that the equivalent resistance is going to be equal to 30 ohms. So just like I did up here when I found 120 ohms, and I rewrote the circuit with this 120 in over here, now I'm going to rewrite this once again. Guys, it's busy work, and it's a lot going on, but it's so necessary. All right, and boom, here it is, nice and simple. Now. This is a beautiful circuit. It kind of looks like the first day that we looked at circuits. Once again, I put a little asterisk here to know that this is a combination of things and I'm going to have to look back and see exactly what it was. But there's one more step to go. And guys, what I'm going to do, these are all in series once again. All right. This is a series circuit, end to end, currently has one path to flow. And we know that in series, like we saw up here, it's just going to be the sum. So now I'm going to rewrite all of these with an REQ of the whole circuit equal to 10 plus 10 plus 30 plus 10, which is going to be 60 ohms. Now this is where some of you might want to like rush and not rewrite this last circuit. That's fine, but I highly recommend doing it anyway. It's going to be really simple. I'm just going to do it right now. All right, guys. So now in blue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each individual circuit and I'm going to work backwards now. And I'm going to take given information here, and then I'm going to take these clumped together resistors, and I'm going to expand them back out, and then expand them back out, and I'm going to expand them back out. And by the time I get to here, 
all the things I didn't have to expand, that information's all going to stay the same. So I'm going to start building on information and I'm just going to start adding V equals IR to all of these. So first, at this particular circuit, I know V total is equal to 120 volts and I know that REQ of the whole circuit equals 60 ohms. If I know V and I know R, I can now find I total of this entire circuit. So I total of this entire circuit is going to be two amps. The way I did that is V equals IR, which is Ohm's law. So that means I equals V over R. That's how I found this information right here. And like I said, now I want to take this information and I want to bring it over here and I say, all right, well, this really applies to all of these resistors. So now let's take these resistors apart and see if I can use current to help me with any relationships I see here. So now I know that coming out of the battery, I total this is two amps. If I come back here now and say coming out of the battery, I equals two amps, well, I say, well, what kind of circuit is this? This is a series circuit. And in a series circuit, I equals I everywhere. That's just something you need to memorize. In a series circuit, I is equal everywhere. So now we use this equivalent to now be able to add information for all of these. Two amps, two amps, two amps, two amps, and two amps. And you might be saying to yourself, all right, well, that means that there's a two amp across each one of these? No. But also, too, I'm going to stay right here for a second and say, oh, man, I have two of my three unknowns. V equals IR, right? V equals IR. So now I can say that V here is going to be 20 volts. And here is going to be 20 volts. And here is going to be 60 volts. And here is going to be 20 volts. And just as a check for myself, I know that in series, V total equals V1 plus V2 plus V3, etc. So if I take this 20, 40, 60, 120, that in fact equals V20. So that's kind of a check for myself. So now I found voltages at each spot. Here I found currents and brought them over. Now I want to see, can I bring this voltage information up here. And then if I have anything that I need to expand out, we'll look at the relationship and we'll see. So let's take the information we just found. We found this to be 20 volts and this to be 2 amps. We don't need to expand that so that can stay the same. The same will hold true here. 20 amps, uh, uh, 2 amps and 20 volts. The same is true here. 2 amps and 20 volts. And now I see, oh, hold on, hold on here, hold on. This 60 volts applies to this parallel circuit here. All right, so now I say in parallel, what is the relationship of voltage? Well, luckily, guys, it's equal. So if the voltage drop across the combination is 6, that means that the voltage drop across each one of these has to be equal to 60 volts as well. And now that's amazing information because now what does this, if I know R and I know V, what can I find out? Well, I can find out that I is equal to V over R, correct? So that means right here I is going to equal 1.5 amps and across this resistor I is going to equal 0.5 amps which again makes sense look I total was two amps one and a half went this way 0.5 went this way that's the sum of those two so just like I did before and over here I'm going to take my new I information I'm going to plug in everything into my original circuit and I'm going to see what happens We'll start here at this one. We know that from before, I was equal to 2 amps. 
the R EQ was equal to 60 ohms. We know here this is 2 amps and 20 volts. Here is 2 amps, 20 volts. And like I said, these are all things from before that don't change because I didn't have to expand them out. 20 volts, 2 amps. Now we look at this 40. Now I have, I have 1.5 amps and I have 60 volts. So I now have to take this 0.5 amps because of this little reminder and I know that this is going to have to be applied to some combination relationship. So I'm going to put 0.5 amps here and I'm going to ask myself what is the relationship between these two resistors and they are in series. And from when we talked over here, how do we relate series? I is equal everywhere. So therefore, I know now this has to be 0.5 amps and this has to be 0.5 amps. And now I have the two of the three that I need here. The voltage here is going to be equal to 10 volts. And the voltage here is going to be 50 volts. These, are in, these situations are in parallel. So the sum better equal each other. 50, 10 is equal to 60. And just like that, guys, you have now found V, I, and R at every single spot, every single element. And then from here, guys, you can use this to find power. You can use it to find energy. You can find it to find resistance and resistivity. You can use this relationship now to solve for any particular problem that you might want to look for. And just to review vocabulary, what these numbers mean, this is a 10 ohm resistor with two amps of current flowing through it and a voltage drop of 20 volts. That's the same here and here. This is a 40 ohm resistor with 1.5 amps traveling through it and 60 volts of potential drop. Just as an added bonus, guys, just remember, I'm going to draw the path of current. Current comes here. It's going to come down this leg. It's going to make a directional turn. It's going to come back up to the battery. And then it's going to split this way. And in this particular example, we didn't have to do anything with Kirchhoff's laws. But just in case you did, the long bars of the battery get a plus. This gets a minus. Current coming into resistors get a plus, and coming out gets a minus. So I can just go back and I'll label all these so I can do all my loop rules, all my junction rules, anything that I need to do. The sum of all of the potential drops in any given loop must be equal to zero. If I start right here, I'm going to have a gain of 120. Right here, I have a drop of 20. Here I have a drop of 20. Here I have a drop of 40. Here I have a drop of 20. That in fact equals zero. So that checks out for Kirchhoff's laws. Guys, if this was helpful, please, I beg you, give the video a thumbs up so YouTube knows that it is a quality product. If there's any other questions you have about anything that's not clear to you, do not be shy. Use this as an opportunity. Leave it in the comments below any questions you might have, and I'll be sure to answer them for you. Enjoy the rest of your night.